For if I radically change my attitude towards life, I will then view the world and see the world from that change of attitude. And that change is a change of consciousness. And that change will be externalized in my world. Now, repentance is at once man's responsibility and a gift of God. Now, let us show you what I mean by it. He said, I and my father are one. Yet I go to my father, for my father is greater than I. We are one, yet my father is greater than I. So I go to my father. How do we arrive at this strange, peculiar statement? And how, what does it mean? In the office of the saint, I am not inferior to my essential being the sender, but only in the office of the saint, I am restricted. I must live by faith. Faith in what? Faith in the sender. It's myself, the Father, for I and my Father are one. But when I am sent into this world to experience death and to experience the restriction of man, I am seemingly inferior to myself, the sender. So when I repent, I go to the sender. I first do what I have to do. So I say repentance is at once a responsibility of man and a gift from God. But now what is my responsibility? I want to change my world. For then I ask myself, what would I see if it were changed? How would I see the world if my world was exactly as I want it to be? How, do I, how would I see it? Well, then see it. In my mind's eye, conjure a scene which would imply that it is true. Live as though it were true in my mind's eye. I know I can't make it so, but in the depth of my own being, the Father, he has the power to make it so. So now I go to my Father. How do I go to my Father? I first of all do what I am called upon to do. I enact a scene implying the fulfillment of my dream. And then I turn it over completely in thanksgiving to him. It is myself, my essential being. But it transcends my reasoning mind. I do not know on this level how it can be done. But I do know that if I have faith in him, which is my own self, it will be done in my world. So we are told in Scripture, without faith it is impossible to please him. And those who are drawn near to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. I must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Well, without faith, it is impossible to please him. What is faith? The same chapter in Hebrews defines faith for us. Faith is the assurance of things not seen. The evidence of things hoped for. By faith we understand that the very worlds were created by the word of God. So that what is seen was made out of things which do not appear. Well, in my world it hasn't yet appeared. I say it all is contained within my imagination. So I will enact the scene which would imply that it's real. And then within myself, I give thanks. Now, we are told the most wonderful prayer ever uttered you find in the book of John, the 11th chapter. He stands at the gate of death and he raised his eyes and said, Thank you, Father, that thou hast heard me. I knew that you always hear me. Well, I can't deny that the depth of my own being is hearing what I am doing. 
what I am inwardly saying. So I can truly say, Father, thank you. He certainly heard what I said. Well, is it now supported by some statement of Scripture? Yes. Again, in John, but now in his letter, the first letter. And in this he said, If we believe that he hears us in whatever we ask of him, we know that we have already obtained the request made of him. If I can simply assume that I am the man that I would like to be, but certainly the depth of my own being has seen that assumption, he has heard that assumption, but now can I actually believe that that's all I need you? Well, I have to confess that I can't do it on this level. I am not wise enough on this level to devise the means necessary to externalize what I have assumed that I am. Well, have you proved it, Neville? Unnumbered times. Unnumbered times.